What is the challenge? Um, now, classical data management approaches really assume at least partial control, or in extreme case, complete control over the schema, data, and data generation. Now, on the web, we have to deal with a distributed, highly distributed and open system. This means that we have a lack of control over schema, data, and data generation. Now, I claim this requires a new model in terms of life cycles, understanding the social technical processes that enable that web scale data management. What my colleague Richard Siganik and I have developed over the past year now is a so called set of linked data life cycles, uh, essentially consisting out of six um, patterns we found uh, based on our experience in publishing consumer linked data in a couple of different use cases, where um, two of these uh, phases, uh, the phase one and the phase two, uh, six, are essentially what we call auxiliary phases, where two and five, uh, two including up to five, are the core uh, phases. I want to walk you now through the life cycle and the phases uh, and explain, motivate a bit why is this uh, respective uh, phase important and how does it uh, contribute to the overall picture. Let's have a look at the first one, data awareness. Hans Rosling, uh, a very famous statistician, uh, once co uh, coined the, the very nice uh, term database hugging disorder. And in fact, it turns out that quite some uh, institutions are not really aware of the data, and even if they are aware, they tend to hug their data and uh, not really uh, are willing uh, to share the data uh, with, with the general public. And um, this is something already addressed by, by Tim Berners-Lee uh, a year ago, and Tim essentially came up with this nice five-star plan for open data, which essentially rewards you as you go along, as you invest more in your data from, you know, make it available on the web under a certain license. Hopefully it's a very public license, but at least it is a clear license what you can do with the data. If you make it available in a structured format, uh, for example, Excel sheet rather than PDF, and then you get a second star. If you additionally, or instead of a proprietary format, provide the data in a structured format which is non-proprietary, such as a CSV file over an Excel sheet, um, then you get a third star. Now, the fourth uh, star is awarded uh, for sites, for, for institutions that actually use linked data formats, where the important thing really is to use URIs, remember, the first and the second uh, linked data principle, um, to identify the things, whatever it has. It could be, you know, statistics, official statistics, um, where each of the observation has a URI. It could be the actual uh, weather uh, we're talking about. So each of the data points there, you know, along with uh, the time and uh, location and so on, has a URI. Why is that important? Again, uh, it is important uh, for a couple of use cases from very simply being able to bookmark it over being able to share that information. I could send you uh, the, the pointer to the data uh, or to a certain observation there. Uh, up to the, the very important case where you want to talk about uh, the data in some other context. Obviously, uh, things like RDF make it easy to talk about uh, this data and uh, heavily rely on having such uh, URIs that identify things. Now, the fifth star uh, corresponds to the fourth principle and essentially says uh, that it's nice if you, you know, put out the data there on an open license, non-proprietary, uh, structured format. However, if you think back what I said earlier regarding the web, what really matters is, at the end of the day, that you set links to other uh, data sets, entities in, in other data sets, and essentially provide context to your own data. Uh, at the URI right, uh, mentioned down there, lab link data area IE 2010 star scheme by example, we uh, discussed this uh, five-star scheme in terms of cost and benefits and giving examples if you want to learn more about that. Now, what have we done regarding data awareness in Ireland? We've set up opendata.ie, essentially bringing together people that have data and have ideas for data and uh, want to share their experiences and ideas. Modeling. So, the second uh, phase in the linked data life cycles is the really first core phase 
in the overall life cycles. What does modeling mean? Well, essentially, what you need if you want to expose your data on the web of data, you first need to figure out how you represent your entities, so classes and properties, uh, relations between the entities. Um, for that, I want to show you uh, two examples there. On the one hand, uh, something we did in the statistical domain, an SDMX-based um, RDF vocabulary that allows you to uh, express whatever kind of statistical content you have in terms of observations and dimensions and so on. The second example is more of a practical nature, which is neologism, uh, available via neologism.dairy.ie, and we've set up a dairy internal sandbox called vocabdairy.ie, where we enable dairyans to set up uh, vocabularies and us to learn how people use vocabularies and uh, learn about scalability properties and so on. One more thing to mention uh, is schema.org, recently introduced by Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft, uh, essentially providing a upper-level ontology of some 180 uh, properties and 280 classes last time I counted them. And this is really something very important because it ticks uh, all the boxes of the uh, linked data principles and essentially providing you with a uh, at least, you know, upper-level ontology of terms, including, you know, whatever you would need to, to describe it, uh, to describe your data. Um, and uh, this also means that interoperability, metadata of interoperability is, uh, is supported through that. We have set up uh, a site called schema.rdfs.org, which essentially uh, is all about supporting schema.org um, from offering different versions of the schema.org type hierarchy, including JSON, CSV, and so forth, um, over to providing tooling and examples and tutorials. So check out schema.rdfs.org if you want. Publishing. Now, once you've figured how you want to express your terms in, in, in your original data source, um, the next step really is to publish the data, making it available on the web or we talk about the enterprise case in the intraweb. So for this, I want to show you two um, examples. The one is regarding the publishing of uh, in, in the e-government domain. Um, one of my colleagues, uh, Fadi Mali, has uh, is working on on that area in his master thesis, essentially uh, describing a concrete publishing pipeline which is currently validated in uh, with our colleagues from Fingal uh, County Council, Dominic Byrne there, and um, we have developed a couple of so-called Google Refine plugins. You might have heard about Google Refine already. If not, check it out. Um, and one of them is, is mainly about um, exposing the data you have there. Your input data would be some uh, tabular data, you know, what you know from, from Excel sheets and Google spreadsheets. Um, exposing that as RDF, along with some vocabularies you want to define and do some reconciliation and, and stuff like that. The sec second example, which I haven't shown you here, but just to, to give you an idea, is the RDB to RDF world. Very exciting area where um, I'm co-chairing the RDB to RDF uh, working group together with Ashok Malotra from Oracle, essentially uh, unifying the way relational databases are mapped to RDF, including uh, uh, linked data issues, how to generate URIs for well-known entities, and so on and so forth. Um, if you Google for RDB to RDF um, W3C, you should land on, on our uh, homepage there and f figure out more uh, about that technology. Now, the fourth of the um, phases is all about discovery. Now, Discovery uh, might mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but what we mean here with discovery really is um, being able to identify data sets and with it uh, entities in these data sets. What we've done there is, starting in early 2008, um, proposed a conceptual model how to describe uh, data sets, and uh, that is called VOID, the Vocabulary of Interlinked Data Sets, uh, has a couple of users in industry and governments, DataGov UK and others, 